When you think of how a city spends your tax dollars, you're probably thinking sidewalk repairs, new stop signs, playground equipment. I'm willing to bet paying bands like Cheap Trick aren't what come to mind. Well, actually, I wasn't aware of that. I just knew that was a, a free event. We found out the city of Clearwater paid nearly $150,000 to musical acts this summer. What would you say to taxpayers who are skeptical about their tax dollars going to Cheap Trick? Let's see what's brewing. Hey, I'm Jenna Bourne, and I'm an investigative reporter at 10 Tampa Bay. If you're new here, Welcome to our caffeine-fueled deep dive into issues that matter to you. Who doesn't love a free concert? <laughs> Except, well, it um wasn't exactly free. We found that Clearwater taxpayers footed the bill for Cheap Trick and other musical acts. Taxpayers like Jennifer Pazda. I wasn't aware that they had to pay Cheap Trick for $50,000. How do you feel about it? Well, no that I know of, and then I even had problem getting in there, so I'd be willing to pay for my own tickets and not to use the city dollars for this. Those tax dollar funded concerts happened during the week long grand opening at The Sound, ending July 4th with the Florida Orchestra and fireworks. The fireworks was really great. The orchestra was really great. This is the first time I ever saw them. The Sound is the brand new waterfront amphitheater in downtown Clearwater's recently redeveloped Coachman Park. It's come a long way from this band shell built in 1957. Coachman Park has a long history of bringing music to downtown Clearwater, as home to both Clearwater Jazz Holiday and Clearwater Sea Blues Festival. City leaders like council member Kathleen Beckman wanted the new venue to open with a bang. You only have one grand opening of this park for the next hundred years, and um, we wanted to make sure it was done right. So the city paid 50,000 taxpayer dollars to the opening act cheap trick, who brought you hits like I Want You to Want Me and, uh, hold on, let me check YouTube. Here we go, Surrender and The Flame. The Florida Orchestra got 80,000 taxpayer dollars. The city also paid the Black Honkies $4,600 and paid the Byrne Brothers and Jaw Movement 2,500 each. What would you say to taxpayers who say, that's not what I want my tax dollars going for. There's all kinds of issues in Clearwater. That's true, there are all sorts of issues in Clearwater and I advocate for those issues every day. Um, but this is and will be a, an economic generator and um, there's, you have to introduce a premier park and location to the media, to residents, to tourists and that's the way we chose to do it. So I feel it was a good investment. We reached out to all the opening week artists that got paid by the city, and the Florida Orchestra was the only group that got back to us. Their spokesperson told us the money covered the cost of professional musicians for one rehearsal and one concert, plus music license fees, equipment, stagehands, conductor, soloist, and other related expenses. I want you to want me. You see, just like Cheap Trick, the city of Clearwater wants you to want Coachman Park. City leaders see it as key to downtown Clearwater's future. It's an $84 million park. It is expensive, um, but it is just transformative. It's iconic. Um, it'll be the heart of our downtown. What has been preventing it from being all it could be? Well, you know, we have some larger landowners um, that have some buildings that haven't been fully activated. That's a challenge. Because, yeah, anyone who visits downtown Clearwater knows there's something kind of uncanny valley about it. Like you're walking past those fake storefronts at Disney World. Jennifer Pazda says she'd rather see her tax dollars enhancing downtown in other ways, not paying for free concerts. There's better ways. I mean, concert 
Everybody's buying tickets for it. If you want to go see a concert, you go buy a ticket. Keep in mind, the city paid for the design and construction of the sound, but it contracted with Ruth Eckerd Hall to manage the venue. On top of profit sharing, the city gets a cut of every ticket Ruth Eckerd sells for events at the sound. And their contract gives the city July 4th, July 5th, plus 10 more days a year for the city to use this venue for its own events. So it's possible more taxpayer funded concerts are in the sound's future. Thanks for watching What's Brewing. Subscribe to 10 Tampa Bay's YouTube channel and add the What's Brewing playlist to your library so you don't miss an episode. And I'll see you next time.